Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. I hope your 2024 is amazing. I'm gonna bring you some really bad news. But in this video, we're gonna talk about bad news and I'm gonna show you how to absolutely dominate and absolutely crush it in 2024. Why? First off, I gotta say, thank you for making this the most amazing, most viewed, fastest growing channel on YouTube because I am showing people as we are dipping into economic crisis, so we're going deeper and deeper, how you can make money from this, how you can be a success, and how we together will take back the wealth of the nation from a bunch of little grubby hands that shouldn't have gotten in the first place, but they deceived us. All right, so here we go. This story is out of Zero Hedge. I know we're super fancy, lots of editing. No, I'm lying. We're just doing this live. But this story is entitled, Buckle Up for a 2024 a bumpy 2024 economist warn. Now there's warnings everywhere. Wouldn't it be so cool, just a little side note, if I got sponsored just to like read off of some company's box, it does don't even bring them up, just go, now weather tech, you're not sponsoring me, but man, I like your, uh, I like those, those floor mats. They're just awesome. All right, sorry, anyway, I digress. Let's talk about how crappy the economy is. It says right here, the US economy embarked on a roller coaster ride in 2023, grappling with high inflation, soaring interest rates, wars abroad, and a shaky banking sector. You know, it's really funny. Things are going to crap in a handbasket really fast. And how many of us have family and friends that are totally clueless? They're just, just, and you know what they say? What's that term? They say, uh, uh, not love is blind. That's, that's, that's sort of true. But uh, they say, uh, ignorance is bliss. All kinds of idiots tell me all the time, ignorance is bliss. I'm like, yeah, you're definitely blissful. But I guess you do live a really nice life. You probably sleep really well at night, not knowing, you know, ahead of time that your bank's going to, you know, take some money from you or the company that you work for is going to lay you off. You just sleep easier. So I get that. Okay, I copy. I get that. And then it's afterwards, you're probably losing a lot of sleep or you, you get your car repossessed, I guess. But there are a certain group of people that actually like knowing ahead of time that things are gonna get bad and then they go, okay, well, you know, my company seems to be on shaky ground. I was just talking to a guy that works for a startup and he's like, you could see it in his eyes. I'm like, it doesn't seem like your startup's gonna be doing well. He's like, you know, and I actually talk to people uh, in startups all the time, but it's interesting because startups, that industry, that's sort of imploding. Um, they're not getting the amount of money as they were in previous years. And there are people jockeying for positions left and right. Um, anyway, sorry, I digress. It's just really interesting. All right, here we go with the bad news. This time last year, the U.S. economy was bracing for an impending recession. Concerns about recession persisted through 2023. Remember, all the, all the president had to do is change the definition of recession. That doesn't... You know, crazy. And then, oh, let's blow a bunch of money on uh, factories that don't have employees and war. And that brought up the GDP. So we skirted a recession. We just spent a ton of money on the war machine. And then we spent a ton of money building factories because, well, China's going to move into Taiwan. We better build those semiconductor factories fast. We don't have anybody to employ them. But crap, that actually caused the GDP to go up. You know, and economists tell you all the time, they go, yeah, GDP's up, everything's good. And you're like, well, wait a minute, the government debt just went through the roof. As a matter of fact, the government borrowed $1.1 trillion from just July to September. Don't you think that's crazy? Don't you? But see, that's actually a bad thing. But there are a lot of people running around like completely blissful idiots thinking everything's amazing. Now, let me ask you this, and I, I love doing these polls too. It gets the algo uh, juiced up and uh, it gets you fired up. But I want to know what you think, because I want to see the pulse of you. Do you think that we are in a recession, whether it be technical or not? Like things are shrinking, type one. Type two, if, uh, what is it? Uh, you don't think we're in a recession, that everything is actually on the up. I really, I genuinely want you to tell me the truth. And then type three, if you hate it when I ask you to type numbers, and then just never watch this channel again. That's that's the answer for the, the threes. Just just go bye bye. I just don't care. Um, all right. So looking at your guys' votes, by a majority, it's ones. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying a two. As a matter of fact, type four, if you're like, honestly, I don't know how to even answer that. And that's really cool because people that type four, that means you're coming into that moment where like, I want to start learning more about what's going on with uh, the economy. I wanna learn how to absolutely dominate it because during crashes, someone's typing a three as sarcasm. During a three, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, you got me thinking about threes. See, you make more money during a crash than a good time. 
But most people, by and large, and that's why we're stuck, a lot of people are stuck in the lower and middle classes and can't move up to that upper middle class uh, region because you don't understand how money works, right? You sit there and you go, hey, I'm gonna go make money in a bank account because they're offering 4.5% interest. Well, I want you to understand that the people giving that 4.5%, they're taking a massive cut above that. And it's like in the crypto space, people are like, oh, I'm making this percentage staking. I'm like, through who are you staking through? Coinbase. You're like, you know they're taking a ton of that if you learn how to stake yourself. But it's that's how the banking sector works. That's how economics works. There's always a bunch of people with their hand out. What I want you doing in 2024 is looking through all this crap we're about to read and find the opportunities. Start a side hustle. Start a business. If you have one already, build it bigger. Don't build it on debt. Build it on, and I know this is going to sound crazy, build it on the poor decisions of other businesses. I get into that in my course, but I mean, it's like, this is what I mean by that. In 2006, I sold all my homes. 2008 rolls through. By 2009, and I had a palm tree business. I was thriving, actually, during the recession, because all I did was beat everyone's prices, including Home Depot. I just advertised, I'm the cheapest in town. Come buy palm trees from me. And um, But I started taking advantage of all these companies going out of business. I was buying up all their inventory. Not in palm trees, but everything. All these businesses. And I was reselling it and making stupid amounts of money. I can't even imagine what happens on the backside. I'm sorry I'm digressing a lot, but somebody needs to hear this. If you go to Facebook Marketplace right now, people are liquidating the nice stuff. For the last two or three years, you go on a Facebook Marketplace, it was all junk, crap, Craigslist, crap. It was just crap. Like, did you literally find this in your shed? Did you go to the junkyard and buy this and try and resell this? Nobody is selling anything nice. Now it's like Lamborghinis, Rolexes, high-end speaker systems. Nice, nice stuff. Why? Because everyone is hurting right now. Okay? I don't care what the government is telling you. We are contracting as an economy right now. The economy is doing something that it didn't do, it didn't have to deal with in 2006 and 2008, and that is inflation, heavy inflation. The government's lying to you when they say it's only, what is it, 3.5%, 4.5%, there's a straight up lie. Go to the grocery store and you can figure it out. Type six, if inflation is hitting you at the grocery store. Type seven, if no, you, you, you believe in the president. If I see any sevens, definitely just don't ever watch this channel again. Because again, I don't care. All I care about is watching the smart people, the people that are intelligent, to be able to go out and go, you know what? We're going to go ahead and crush it. We're going to take all this crappy bad news and we're going to absolutely dominate it. So here we go. Some more bad news. The Federal Reserve, ooh, this is a great way to start. The Federal Reserve intervened with emergency measures and as a result, bank liquidity recovered. Oh no, and you know, let's go back. I, I skipped a line because this is really important. This really shows you if you typed a three earlier, because you're like, no, I think the economy's doing good. Um, I think that was it. I don't remember. Um, th this tells you where we were last year. This time last year, the U.S. economy was bracing for an impending recession. Concerns about a recession persisted through 2023, particularly following the banking turmoil in the second quarter, which witnessed a 1930s-style bank run on Silicon Valley and First Republic banks. Remember, everyone, uh, type type eight if you remember me warning, la not this last November, but the November before, I said, we're going to have a banking crisis in the first or second quarter of that next year, 2023. Nailed it, right? When these, I kept all those videos. We're going to someday get an editor to show like, hey, look, on this date, I said this, on this date, you know. It's, but anyway, it was bad, right? Now, it said 1930s style bank run. That It's actually still sort of happening right now. The M2 money supply is actually decreasing. We have people pulling money out and they're becoming more and more aware. See all the people that typed eight? They were here, not this size. And this isn't like a bragging thing. At a certain point, you got to sit there and go, okay, look, I did this, I did this, I did it to show you all this. Now, this is coming next. Right. I also said for like this whole last year, I'm all, everything starts in October. Look, we have a war kickoff. I'm like, oh, that's weird. A war kicks off exactly when I said it starts the uh, beginning of October. And all of a sudden the news headlines are dominated by it. Why? Because it's hiding a bunch of stuff, a bunch of layoffs, a bunch of everything. Every time we go into a, re a deep recession or a, really an economic crash all throughout the history of the world, you know what happens? War. Really weird. Why? Two reasons. Because governments can hide what they've been doing all along to cause the crash, economic crash, and they can go and try and rape and plunder another country and take their wealth. Okay? I want people to understand that. Think about this. Think about this. Our GDP just went up because it was announced a bunch of factories are being built, and we spent a bunch of factories being built because of an impending war with Taiwan and China. And we are 100% dependent on the chips 
that come out of Taiwan, the semiconductor chips, if we don't have those, our economy is going to collapse. We're not gonna be able to sell as many goods and we're not gonna be able to maintain our computer systems, our cell phones, our vehicles, everything. It's not a joke, it's a big deal. If you're in the semiconductor industry, please comment down below and let people know how bad this is. It is a tragedy what's going on right now. We became, we are like Germany. We became too independent, like Germany did on Russia for their energy. We became too independent or dependent on Taiwan for their chips. So we spent all this money on factories here. They haven't started firing up yet. So that helped at the GDP and then the war machine, okay? That's it. So we're already there. The governments are starting wars to spend money recklessly and it's going to come back in the form of big inflation in our country, okay? It's a big deal. But again, look at the ways you can absolutely dominate it. You are going to build your own business, your own side hustle off of the poor decisions or the people that were in complete denial before as this happens. And you're going to go out and crush it. I want you to be prepared to take over companies, to buy businesses, to buy inventory, to start something that will make you amazingly wealthy. But you have to think differently today when everyone thinks you're a cuckoo bird. I'm a cuckoo bird. Everyone thought I was a cuckoo bird when I sold my real estate in 06. As a matter of fact, they thought I was a cuckoo bird when I started buying real estate in 2000 because we were coming off the dot-com crash. Interest rates were dropping down. People weren't buying. They said I was nuts. I was nuts then. I was nuts when I sold. I was nuts when I bought Bitcoin. I've always been nuts. No, you know what's actually the truth? So let me know if you've been cuckoo bird down below. Type nine if, and be proud of it because that just means you're ahead of the game. You're going to be winning. Hey, also real quick, I gotta say thank you so much to Neil and Carlos, my two awesome uh, moderators. Uh, Neil has his own YouTube channel, go check it out. Carlos, I'm trying to talk into a YouTube channel. He's, he's owned a restaurant for like forever, like when restaurants were in tents. I mean, he's been around for a long time. He knows a lot and that's why his channel is 100. Carlos, start a channel. All right, here we go. So now, now it says here, uh, the Federal Reserve intervened with emergency measures. That's because it's really bad. Like the Great Recession, right? But worse? All right, cool. Um, and as a result, bank liquidity recovered and financial and credit markets soon normalized. Actually, that's not true. Hey, Federal Reserve, uh, I would like to do this. I dare you to stop giving, close the, the repo window today and don't open it for the next 30 days. Let's see what happens. Oh, the banks are going to crash. That's right. So the banks actually have a lifeline right now. They are on life support. Okay. If the Fed stops it, they're screwed. So we're, we're actually in a crash right now. Okay, here we go. Um, currently, there's growing talk about the prospect of a soft landing in 2024. How would you like it a soft landing? Just so nice. I'm just going to, this crash is going to end up on a pillow of feathers from a mongoose. Wait a minute. Mongooses don't have, but gooses have. Okay, geese. Geese, a pillow full of geese feathers, and it's gonna be so nice. You know, it's really weird. You know, Ben Bernanke said something like that in 2005. Everything's okay, there's no real estate crisis. We have uh, stemmed the tide. What does that even mean? Oh, <sighs> I'm not gonna say, get me banned. All right, um, while it says, although the economy has shown resilience in the face of numerous challenges. Many analysts predict this significant slowdown in the coming months, with some even anticipating a recession. While so far economic growth has held up well and inflation has been coming down, there is a high risk that we will experience an economic recession before the 2024 election. Now the US economy is yet to see the full effects of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy tightening. And there are major problems in the commercial real estate space. Weird. You know, I've been talking about that for three years. And that's what's really funny about crashes. They actually take a long time to manifest because what you're waiting for is the masses of the fools. And fools love living in folly. They love it. They, that's, I, I have had so many times people just, you know, as I'm telling this stuff, they go, well, ignorance is bliss. I'm like, yeah, you're a moron. Yeah, keep, keep being in bliss. I'm going to go crush it. I just, it's funny. I mean, even people that I've worked with before, they've, I've been telling this for years and I just keep telling them like, man, I remember guys when I told you to buy gold at 1500 bucks and all you guys, 
you're a doom and gloomer. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just making tons of money. Do you remember when I told you to buy Bitcoin? Yeah, I'm making tons, like, I just don't get it. I'm like, okay, you just, I've got to go somewhere else. It's, don't worry, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good feeling when you know what you know, this is working, you're crushing it, and the fools are just sitting there, you're a doom and gloomer. <laughs> oh my God, you're, you're, you're oh, copy. All right, so let's keep going. Now it says here, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase is more pessimistic. That's weird. He's only like the head of the largest bank in the nation. What the heck would that dude know? Well, it says here, during a speech at the New York Times Deal Book Summit in November of 2023, he cautioned Wall Street not to fall for robust economic growth. Inflationary pressures, he said, could persist and a recession should not be ruled out. Wait a minute. Jamie Dimon, running the largest bank in the country, has the most access to data than anyone else in the country. It's insane. Like, if people realize how much power you have. See, knowledge is power. Understanding and wisdom. That's what takes you to the next level in life, especially in finance. Well, Jamie Dimon, in his wisdom, he's warning people. He's also selling his stock for the first time ever. Well, that's weird. Why would he do that? Well, it's because the banks are screwed. And even if it's not Chase that's screwed, right? And I honestly, look, I bank at Chase. I, I bank at lots of banks for different reasons. Like the other day, we were told by a bank, you can't, <laughs> this is insanity. You can't deposit electronically. What was it? Like a check more than $4,000. I'm like, are you high? That's, I, that's, that was my reaction. My wife says I got to stop saying that, but I'm like, are you high? Like, what are you smoking? Like, how do I run a business and I can only deposit and start, well, you could bring it into a teller. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. like uh, this, this is how the world works. So I have tons of banks, right? Chase, I don't believe is going to crash. Okay. I don't, I don't, even if I don't agree with the, the bank and how they do things, I don't think they're going to crash. There are certain banks that are too big to fail. And so Jamie Dimon's out there selling his stock because he knows when all these other banks failing, because we already got like over 700 that are on a lifeline with the Federal Reserve right now. It's going to take his stock down. And he's out there warning. Who should listen to him? I'm going to. Now, Mr. Dimon described the U.S. economy as being on a sugar high from stimulus money handed out during the pandemic and the Fed's quantitative easing. Well, no, duh. He says they are drugs running through the system, he said. So I'm quite cautious about the economy. Many analysts expect the upcoming election to be a significant source of uncertainty and anxiety around the economy. You know what's, you know what's funny? I'm going to, little, little thing. I'm not the most liked person on YouTube. I, I'm just going to, I know, I'm surprised. Every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm smart enough. I'm good enough. Gosh darn it, people like me. But but really, all these other fancy channels, the, the economists, they're just like, who, who are you? And I'm like, nobody. I'm just a dude with a brohawk and a, a dream. And that dream is to show people how to absolutely crush it. And I don't need no fancy editing to share with you. So if you want to be one of those people that are just like following, not the crowd, the mainstream, but the people that are like, all right, something's really screwed up. I crush it over here and I've crushed it over there. And now I'm going to go crush it over here. When nobody, nobody sees what's coming over here. Let's stick around. So we're going to have some fun. All right. We are literally Ninja Nation. Have you ever heard of it? Type 10 if you've heard of it. Type 11 if you haven't. Before I tell you what it is, I just want you to type 11. If you've never heard of the term Ninja Nation, I'm going to explain it to you. And I'm going to tell you right now. I believe this in my soul right now. Because this is something that I came up with a while back. And it's a, it's a persona. It's a type of person. Um, it's a personality. See, there's nothing real fancy about me or special about me. I mean, I try. I, I just try my hardest. I've, I've tried and failed. I've tried and succeeded. And then what I do is I try and succeed more and more and more. All of us go through that. And I turned around and I, I said, you know what? The reason why I named this channel Ninja, uh, Economic Ninja was because I've always... You, you couldn't tell I had money, right? I wrote a book, it affected me in college, it changed me, called The Millionaire Next Door. I was not a millionaire in college. As a matter of fact, um, the guy that gave me this book had to loan me, I, I think, 500 bucks to pay some bills. It was one of my good friends, his name was Jeremy. Jeremy 
I don't want to say his full name, because I don't want people contacting him. He's an amazing guy. Super cool guy. He's a, uh, a high patrol officer now. He's so cool. Um, he doesn't watch his channel, so he's not going to know I'm talking about him. He loaned me 500 bucks. He also brought me a book. And it was The Millionaire Next Door. And he... Uh, it wasn't at the same time. And I paid him back real quick. But he was one of my college, good college friends. Traveled all over with him. And he says, I read this book and it reminds me of you. And that book was about people that have money that never show it. You'd never know that they were successful. And my whole life, after reading that book, I lived like that. I just, I just did. And I was always put down, made fun of, whatever. I'm, I'm so used to that as a kid. But uh, I, I built a lot of confidence in myself because of my achievements. And, and not a lot of people knew about it. And it wasn't until I started this YouTube channel that I said, they need to know, people need to know how to be successful and it's not what the media shows you. It's not Lambos and all that kind of stuff. Am I gonna own a Lambo someday? Yeah, but I'm gonna be honest with you. This isn't bragging. I've had the, uh, the I've had the money to buy a Lamborghini cash since I was 25 years old. All right. Um, nobody ever knew that around me. I used to say it to my closest friends, but I was always saving up and investing. Okay. This isn't bragging. Like this is literally my life. I I drove a a, a hoopty, you know, 1989 or 91 Honda Civic. Even when I was making a million dollars, I, I, I worth a million bucks. I, I just that's what I drove because it saved me money, and 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 I put my money away. When I started the channel, I said I'm going to show people how to be different, how to make money, how to crush it in life, and and I've got to tell them some truths. And that was really hard for me to like come out and say, okay, yeah, this is what I've done. I even had friends come out and go, you know, it looks like you're real successful right now. I'm like, you 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 were with me when we got invited to a dinner with someone I can't even say his name online now anymore and they're like yeah but and i'm like yeah but what you mean you i i want you to be a success i want you to just piss excellence i know i use that as a joke all the time but i'm not joking i want everything you do to be excellent and one of the things that you need to, how to get there is to break down yourself and really look in the mirror and say first off yeah acknowledge what you do wrong but look at yourself and go i can do anything i set my mind to this year Anything I set my mind to. And if you don't believe it, then say it out loud. Say the ninja says I can do it. So then I'm going to go do it. Because you got to start building some confidence up in yourself. Your tongue's a two-edged sword. It builds you up or it will cut you down. And all this bad news that I'm reading right now, I'm telling you right now, please hear me. And, and, and tie, say, I accept this. If you're accepting this right now, if you can't even look yourself in the mirror and say, you know, everything in your life's bad, well then, then do it because I said it. And someone believes in you. I meet, I meet you every day. I met a, I was in Las Vegas at SEMA a while back and uh, I met a gentleman, I'm, I was playing craps with my buddies. And this guy starts yelling, screaming, ninja, ninja. And, and he's coming up and, uh, and we, I had to pull back bets and sort of take a second. And he, he goes, hey, I'm here because of you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I started a business, like you said, and, and I'm making over six figures in my first year and I'm here at SEMA because of you. And I'm just like, dude, I'm, you're not here because of me. You're here because you, know, you just decided to believe in yourself. This economy is screwed up. And it's going to get a lot worse. But here, all I want you to do is learn from it and go absolutely dominate it. This, this is the time to stand up and get excited. Like I said, people, more people become wealthy during bad times than good times. But the masses have no concept of that. The masses are looking at their 401ks. Oh, look, I got a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, I've already seen a million dollar portfolios get cut in half twice in the last 23 years. Twice during the dot-com bust and during the uh, 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 great uh, financial crisis. And it's gonna, get, it's gonna happen again. It's gonna get cut in half. You watch over the next couple of years. You watch what happens to portfolios. The only reason uh, stocks are going up right now is because people are screaming for yield and they're trying, to, they're trying to save anything they can right now and make any money anywhere they can. But fools, and, and this stock market, it's, it's being built up because there are more buyers than sellers because people are panicked over inflation. And you look at the company earnings, they are horrible. They're horrible. Uh, most uh, companies go up like Home Depot stock goes up the other day because they announced, hey, we're, we're, you know, we're laying people off. They, or it, was, it wasn't Home Depot that did that. It was one other uh, the company the other day. It's like all these companies pop because like, hey, we're laying people off. Don't worry, we're gonna have less costs. Well, hey, hey, 
Hey, to the, the stock market investors that think they're super stoked because they made 5%, just remember this. That company is making less sales. That's why it's laying people off. So the stock pops. Oh, cool. It's a zombie company. We have zombie companies all over the place. Home Depot has warned where the consumer has changed. They're no longer you know, doing really nice things in their house. They're regressing, regressing in their purchases. They are now only doing uh, need to do projects around their house. This real estate market, it's a zombie market. Yes, I get it. Uh, the sales went up in a town. Cool, because an idiot, I, I'll give an example. I just went to a town, I don't want to say which one, uh, but it is a very tight community. It's billionaire row, okay? You've got billionaires, so a lot of the homes. So the average home price in that area is, I think, $2 million in the whole town. And I went there and uh, you've got a handful of fools that brought up the lower end homes. The high end homes, you know, uh, five million and up, they are not selling at all, at all. The ones that are selling are these condominiums for like 700,000 is the lowest price and it's, it's a hole and, uh, and up. And they're selling to a handful of people. That's the only thing that's, there's like no transactions going on. That's a zombie market. And that's coming to a really fast halt. There's gonna be a little bit of sales this, this spring. I just laugh at it. All the professionals tell me, oh no, no, it's, it's gonna come back. I'm like, based on what? Companies are laying people off like crazy right now. Layoffs are gonna get worse in 2024. The Fed's saying, we're not lowering rates. We'll pencil in a couple to make you guys happy, but you're not gonna like what happens on the other side because there's gonna be a, a little bit of a dip, a tiny dip in interest rates, tiny. Mortgage is still gonna be over 6% and then wham. Yeah, get ready for that. And, and that's the thing. If you see those things ahead of time, you go, oh my gosh, I just wanna sit back and I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm about to go rent a place. See, I put my money where my mouth is and I'm positioning myself in one of the most amazing markets in the country. And I'm gonna be picking up stuff hand over fist. Now, obviously I'll be doing it inside of its own corporation and stuff like that, I'm gonna do it right. But all this news, you've got Jamie Dimon warning that what's going on. You've got stuff in the economy that is not looking good. Um, check this out. Here's a part of this story that you should hear. Cautious optimism in the job market. In 2023, 20, that's everybody wants to be an eternal optimist. You could be an optimist all day long and be dead wrong, right? Do you agree with me? It says here, in 2023, salary expectations rose considerably, according to John Hill, CEO of the Energists, a Houston-based recruiting firm for ener the energy industry. He said, this is, a, this is fair from a job seeker or employee's perspective. When inflation is high, accepting the same pay that they would have had before is functionally taking a pay cut, he told the Epic Times. That said, since business businesses are also feeling the impact of higher costs and inflation, this puts extra pressure on payroll budgets, which are already tight. Mr. Hill said in his said his clients are cautiously optimistic about 2024 amid economic and political uncertainties. I don't care how optimistic you are. Look at what he just said. People are demanding higher pay to move throughout the job industries, right? Different industries. And the companies that have to give them that higher pay are already dealing with inflation themselves and less business, less sales. So what does that mean? If they want to recruit someone at a higher price, there's got to be a cut somewhere. That's what's happening all across. But yet humans are optimistic. Well, I don't give a crap. You could sit there and hope in this hand and crap in the other one. Let's see which one fills up first. Now, that's not to scare you. That's to get you pumped up because you are part of the 1%. Your bank account might not reflect it, but I'm telling you what, all you need is your mindset to reflect it and your bank account fills up. That's how it works. That's how you become wealthy. That's how you become successful. You don't think like the herd, the morons. Type 13 if you agree with that. Um, now, the Fed being in the spotlight, this is the last part of this video or the last part of this uh, story. And it is really in the spotlight. The Federal Reserve, everyone, most people don't understand this. The Federal Reserve actually knows what they're going to do to the economy when they raise rates. It's weird. They knew what they were doing in 2003 when they started raising rates. I went, oh crap, this can't last long. And I knew there was a blow off top coming, so I'm selling, selling, selling into strength on my real estate portfolio. And then they stopped and they held it 
higher for longer. That's what they've been saying they're gonna do it now. They're gonna wait till the economy to crash. And when rates actually significantly drop, significantly drop, it's too late because they broke the back of the economy. The recession will be announced about a quarter later. And what happens is it doesn't matter how low rates go, the masses are already too late. They've already missed a credit, a single credit card payment or a house payment or a car payment. And they are knocked out of the debt markets because no one's gonna touch them during everything coming down and, and getting slow, you know, slowing down and the cogs, you know, s slowing as they move. They're not gonna be able to dive in that debt market and go, I got that house, I wanna buy that house, oh, I wanna buy that car. Do you remember, see, car payments, you know, during bad times, they go to 0% interest rates. We are seeing a time with high interest rates on cars, but now manufacturers on certain models are already dropping them to like two, 3%. That means they can't sell them. They're not, they're not doing it on all of them yet, but that's gonna get better and better and better. But that's for prime borrowers. Borrowers with prime credit, good credit, okay? So, you know, I, I talk to real estate investors all the time. They're like, I'm an investor. I'm like, well, how much did you put down on the last price? And they're like, 25%. I'm like, you are high if you think you're an investor. An investor puts the bare minimum down and it cash flows. <laughs> you're not an investor, you're a speculator. You're just trying to put your money somewhere. Just be honest with yourself. When I go buy those 100 homes I've told everyone I'm gonna do during this next crash, I will be putting the bare minimum down on the first one, and then I'm going to refinance and flip it, refinance and flip it. And every house I buy after the first one will be zero down or the bare, bare minimum, depending on how, much, how many are in the, each portfolio. And I don't want you sitting on the sidelines. I want you to be prepared for this. You know, hold on here. Let's see this. Um, let me read this part about the Fed being in the spotlight because they are holding the strings and this is very important. It says the Fed in the spotlight during the, it's fine. It's during its final policy meeting of the year in mid December of 2023, the Fed predicted three rate cuts in 2024. Wall Street has since started a new round of guessing games because of its influence on economic activity and investment strategy. The central bank's actions in 2024 will be the subject of much speculation and discussion. The December Federal Open Market Committee policy meeting minutes released January 3rd showed that the Fed officials agreed to lower interest rates in 2024. They, they didn't. They said they'd pencil some in. Okay, everyone's taking this wrong. And right after that meeting, a bunch of Fed officials came out and said, you know, the markets are, aren't getting what we said. They're not getting what we said. We didn't say we we're gonna lower. They're pricing this in too much. I mean, every, every Fed official has come out at one point or another since that meeting and said that, right? So it says here, um, but they provided little information regarding the pace timing and size of rate adjustments because of uncertainties about how the economy will evolve. Before the Fed starts cutting interest rates, there needs to be more progress on inflation, according to Greg McBride, chief financial analyst at Bankrate. Well, I'm gonna tell you what the chief financial uh, analyst has no concept over, zero. And I'm gonna tell you right now, who, what's your name again? Let's, let's grab this. Uh, oh yeah, Greg, Greg McBride, your college failed you. Call them up and demand a return on your money. And this is why. The Federal Reserve never, ever, ever lowers rates substantially just because they want to, because the economy is just doing really good. No, it is 100% the opposite reaction. Type 15, if you agree with this and you understand how this works, the Federal Reserve loves charging you rent interest. They love making, taking, taking a percentage of money from you, okay? The Fed only lowers rates when things are bad, and then they keep them really low until they get better. And then what they do is they raise rates to crush you. End of story. Your college, Greg, failed you. Go back and take another class. I didn't even get into college. I, and it don't take a brainiac to figure this out. But good news, my bank account didn't care that I couldn't barely finish high school. That's the truth. And I say that to every single one of you right now that understand how important that is. Do I think a college education is good? Yes, I do, because it gets you into certain aspects of this world. Like, 
that you can't get into. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, you want to be a fighter pilot, you have to have a degree. That's how the world works. But I'll tell you right now, you don't need a degree to be a multimillionaire. And I'm living proof of that. And I say that not to brag, but to inspire you. In 2024, you use this uh, bad information. You use this doom and gloom as motivation. And every single time someone tells you you're nuts, just sit there and grin. Says the economic ninja doesn't think I'm nuts. You're part of ninja nation. A nation of people that are getting prepared and they ain't scared. As a matter of fact, they're excited about this crap. Hope you guys have a great day. To everybody that hasn't seen my other channel, Real Estate Ninja, please go check it out. It's growing fast. It's, and, and I really appreciate it. It's all different news, not just about real estate. I hope you have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.